Okay, so the second of the three intermolecular forces is basically dipole interactions, or sometimes it's called dipole-dipole interactions. So this uh, is all based on the polarity of molecules. If, mo if molecules are polar, then they get to, <clears throat> get to interact with these dipole-dipole interactions. So if you look at the diagram here, you see that one half has got more negatives than the other half. So one half is partially negative, the other half is partially positive. Well, you can imagine if you put two of these molecules together, that the negative side is going to be attracted to the positive side. That's a dipole-dipole interaction. And again, you can see the same image over here. These are on top uh, of one another, but these are side by side. The negative half of one is attracted to the positive of the other, and the flip side, they're repelled. Negative side is repelled by the other side. So this guy might be forced to spin around or move around within the sample uh, so that the opposite sides can be attracted to each other. So it's a partial positive charge on one molecule is weakly attracted to the partial negative charge on the other neighboring molecule. So we've got this positive and negative interaction. here, And it's all due to the polarity that you already learned about. So look at this uh, crazy image here. We see any time there's uh, negative, there we go, the blue, negative and negative, these guys are going to be repelled, hence the gray arrows, and any time there's a negative side and a positive side near each other, these guys are attracted. So this is, again, going to influence uh, the behavior of these particles when they're in, in a sample together. Now, the strength of the attraction, how strong it is, influences the states of matter. So if this attraction is really, really strong, this side's really attracted to this side, they're held together closely, this is going to result in a solid. But if the attraction isn't as strong, and these things can wiggle around a little bit more, they're not held as tightly as over here, then it would be a liquid. And gases aren't going to have any of these attractions. Gases are just going to bing, 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 go their own way, and they're not really attracted to each other um, in terms of dipole-dipole interactions. If you add energy, you guys know about solids and liquids. You can get solid ice to melt. Well, what do you do? You make the particles wiggle. You add heat energy. So you add energy and you disrupt these forces holding them together. And if you disrupt the forces holding them together, then all of a sudden you end up with this image here where the particles are moving around more randomly and the forces aren't as strong. And if you continue to heat, now we'd end up with gases and these particles would bing, 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 turn into gases and zip up into the, uh, into the environment above the sample of the liquid. Now, we just mentioned there's dipole-dipole interactions. Well, there's also ion-dipole interactions. Now, you guys learned about ions. These are charged particles. So they're represented in this image here just by just a little sphere. So you could have a cation, positively charged cation, or you could have a negative anion. This cation is attracted to the ion, or to the dipoles here. This positive is attracted to those negatives. So let's say this is salt, Na. And over here we have the Cl. This sodium ion is attracted to the negative sides, maybe of water molecules. And this negative side is attracted to the positive side of water molecules or any other polar substance that you put it in. So that, that's how salt dissolves. You put salt, normal salt crystals, into a cup of water and all of a sudden you don't see the salt anymore. Where where'd it go? It got surrounded by these uh, dipoles here. And in some cases it could be water. So we're going to talk a lot more about salvation or how these guys dissolve, but you should know that there's an, an interaction between ions, charged particles, and molecules that are polar and have this dipole ends. One end is positive, one end is negative. They interact with each other. And you'll see that in the active learning section that we do. Here's another image of what I was talking about. Here's the sodium chloride. The little sodium and the chlorine get pulled apart, and here's a, another shot of uh, just these two ions. But notice the negative chlorine is attracted to the positive hydrogen. See those little two hydrogen bumps down there? Those guys, that's the positive side of the molecule. And over here, we have the opposite. We have the red oxygen side attracted to this positive. Because oxygen, if you look at a water molecule, you should know this, oxygen has that partial negative charge, and down here is the partial positive charge. So oxygen's attracted to, because it's negative, attracted to the positive cat cation. And the little hydrants, because they're the positive side, they're attracted to the negative anion. All right, next set, hydrogen bonding. We'll come back to that in the next video.